7th of August 2023. This and that episode 170. My original idea was to call it Monday is a fun day, but this Monday turned out not so much fun. But before we start with this stuff, let's enjoy these photographs from Moscow. And it was done by a photographer that really knows his things. He's good. And obviously the images has been processed. So uh, in a photographic salon, this would not go through under standard photographs. It would be altered reality or digitally modified or whatever. But the processing is done well. Enjoy. That is great images, and uh, I, I like it a lot. But let's get to the news. Before I eat the news, what's going on in Cape Town is bad news. And I have published a small news flash on it. But those that follow my channel know that I've been talking about the risk of a Maidan in South Africa for a while now. And it looks like things are moving in that direction. Mama Maidan paid her visit, and it seems to me the minions listened. The tragedy for the black communities, for the decent people in the black communities, I'm not talking about that Stone Age SKP, Sosok generation. The decent people are in hell of a danger. Because these Stone Age escapees, they destroy and destruct everything, everywhere. They don't care. They just destroy and destruct. So, South Africa has got a problem. But it seems to me that the providers of the snake bite is also running in an issue. You must read the thing on the screen because if I repeat some of those words, I've got problems. But it says here, the Puff Adders officials admit a special batch of snake bite was prepared for their employees. Now, why the fuck would they do that? I think your guess is as good as mine. Officials confessed at a Senate hearing in Australia that their employees were given a special batch, not the one which was rolled out in the public. Let that sink in. Then we get to the Donbass. And I can be very angry and allow my temper to run away, but I'll try my best. Ukrainian militants shell Donetsk with cluster munitions. Ukrainian forces have reportedly fired cluster munitions into Donetsk city, striking a private residence, a university and other civilian targets. Four rounds of 155 cluster bombs were fired into the city center on Saturday night. Now, you Western taxpayers, specifically the American taxpayers, this is your handiwork. I hope you feel great about it. Civilian casualties in Donbass spiked since Ukraine began using cluster munitions. We see that, given the use of cluster munitions, the number of victims among the civilian population is also growing. 
Then as Pushilin said during his speech, now here is something for the European taxpayers. I presume that you are very happy and your hearts are pumping wildly to see the success that your tax money is bringing to the Donbass. The number of victims among the civilian population is growing. But I'm a guy that believes in karma. Your shit is booked. And then we get to the economy. Russia ranks fifth among world economies, World Bank GDP report. And for that guy that gives me so much laughable moments, your request about the Russian economy, here is something that you should smile about. Russian news outlets have drawn attention to the World Bank report published in July about 2022 economic rankings, which places Russia fifth among the world economies despite all the sanctions. The other top positions remain unchanged, taken by China, USA, India and Japan. Meanwhile, the BRICS countries have surpassed G7 nations in total GDP. Yeah, and take note, this is not a report brewed up on a cell phone somewhere in the Caucasus. This is from the World Bank. And the next one is actually quite interesting. Which countries are net exporters and importers? Now the green ones, which is on the top, is China, Russia, Norway, Germany, Saudi Arabia, Japan. They are net exporters. So their citizens are not suffering from inflation and mad taxes. Because at least they are making more money than they are spending. But look at the bottom list. Turkey, Brazil, France, India, United Kingdom. What do you know? And look at the United States. The once mighty US. Look at that. Importing like hell. Don't make anything there because the greenies will get a fucking fit if you dare to produce something. And I see they're now killing all your cows as well. You guys are a special type of crazy. More on the economy. More good news. European companies lost 100 billion euros after exiting Russian market due to Ukraine conflict. Financial Times. According to the British outlet, 176 companies faced impairment of assets, costs associated with the exchange rate, and other one-time cost, costs caused by the sale, closure, or reduction of the Russian segment of their businesses. And someone should send a WhatsApp to Ursula van der Crazy and tell her, the EU economy is in tatters. And then we have this, and this is a real fun message. Estonian president couldn't go to Australia because of lack of money. And how is that? I wonder why. And this, this people, in the, they're up in the Baltics. They want NATO to give Ukraine Nuclear weapons. They can't even afford a fucking plane ticket. And then we get to more madness. The British bank to ditch racist term black market. The term black market should not be used because it is racist. An umbrella group representing the leading UK bankers has said, advocating the use instead of a more tolerant phrase Illegal market. <laughs> okay. Carry on. And then you get to this crazy part. That crazy Netherlands, which has just chosen a thing with a dick as their beauty queen of the year. Miss Netherlands has got a dick. And as if that wasn't enough, Children were introduced to sex toys on a TV show in the Netherlands. 
The aim of the show was to entertain the audience with how children react to sex toys. <laughs> I'm laughing. It is absolutely crazy. But I'm like, they're falling apart. But they but at least they're enjoying the ride. And then we get to this fantastic news. Net Zero Green. These trucks are in the Congo, loaded with cobalt, copper, nickel, tin and manganese, needed for the manufacturing of EV batteries. The border queue is 20 miles and takes a week. Stick that in your green pipe and smoke it. But does the greenies say anything about this? No, 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 no. I just point to that battery car and say, look at battery car, no emissions. But they don't think about the environmental fucking disaster lying behind that car. But I've become used to the fact that the world is driven by lunatics. And then we have this interesting news. Tens of thousands of illegal migrants entered the UK, UK last year. An estimated 21,000 migrants are believed to have entered the United Kingdom last year, entirely undetected by border authorities. The Times reported on Saturday. Well, but they were fucking effective in keeping food and medicine out of Yemen. But they can't keep rubber ducks off their own coast. Amazing. Then we get to some info here. Show you how one lunatic can fuck up a whole country. Only takes one guy. In 1859, a man named Thomas Austin released 24 rabbits into the wild for sport hunting in Australia. In 70 years, the rabbit population grew to 10 billion. Fuck! But it sounds familiar. I know other continents where the same shit is happening. And this one made me smile. 50.6% of Poles consider the presence of Wagner in Belarus a threat to Poland's security. Now I've got the question. So Wagner in Belarus is a threat for Poland's security. But NATO troops in Ukraine must not be seen as a threat to Russia. Another instance of special, special stupid. And then they think the whole world is as stupid as they are. But they are getting their fair share of their suffering because of stupidity. And then we get to this one, and this one is most probably going to upset a lot of black eyes here in South Africa, because of quite clear, the Buddha didn't sell slaves. Ghana archaeologists have found what is believed to be the first English slave fort in Africa, Cormantine, located on the site of the later Dutch fort Amsterdam. It was built on the Atlantic coast in 1631 when Europeans shifted their interest from trading gold to the slave trade. No Buddha involved there. And then we get to this guy. White man in South Africa. Cyril is only concerned about your tax money, not your life. Why pay any person who has no regard for your well-being? Ramaphosa will not be probing, kill the boor, chant. But what do you expect? Jellyfish, Ramaphosa. And here is a spin-off for them. For them. Julius, did, Julius did an excellent job on that Saturday in that stadium. Afri Forum tried for 30 years to get the world's attention. Julius did it in one song. Australia taking note of the EFF and Malema's anti-white racism. They are not impressed. Well, at least now they know about it. And then we get to this. I mean, this could have been a what a fuck moment. And this is our local Naspers gang. And I'm going to read it in Afrikaans. 
So, mens braak gal as jy uitpraat teen plaasmoorde en die communiste se doodsdreigemente wat die media voor opkom en probeer om te rechtverdig. Beeld, jylle behoort jylle te skaam met hierdie opskrif van Sletwerk 24. Musk braak weer gal oor Kiel de Boer na die New York Times artikel. Die stobbel maar net nie gaan le oor die gewraakte Kiel de Boer, Kiel de Vamer frase nie, die keer na artikel in die New York Times. So, dis een galbraakrij as hulle praat oor plaasmoorde. Maar nou ja, wat kan ons nou anders dus verwacht? En ek nie veel nie. En daai story, dan kom ons by hierdie ene. En dis one, I read it and I thought, what the hell is going on here? Has this man taken to what much of the white stuff? It seems to me Russia will need to be rebranded. They should come up with some other name for themselves. They should be reduced in size. They will have a white flag. I want you and I to consciously understand what our key task is. Why it is impossible to stop in the middle of the path. And that is Podoliak, main peanut in the packet there in Kiev. And the commentator says, Podoliak struggling to contain his inner Hitler Nazi. Maybe he needs a refresher on what happened to Hitler and Nazi Germany. Yeah. And then this was interesting. It's a long article. You can stop it. You can read it if you want to. And it was a guy in America that were making a moor of a story about the fact that China and Russia is building so many nuclear power stations and that is going to make them the leaders of providing that to the developing world. And the developing world is not going to buy American technology. I wonder why. These guys, they they only interested in a thing if they can control the whole world with it. Otherwise, and then we back to Malema and Elon Musk. This Ray Laverne posted on Twitter. You can't make this shit up. Watch EFF leader Julius Malema calls Elon Musk an illiterate. Who else will do that but that plastic leader, the EF? And then you get this sickening shit. Oh, nothing, just the editor of Daily Maverick and a constitutional law professor having a laugh about South African farmers and their little children being hacked and burned to death. And that Richard Poplack from the Daily Maverick tweets, What wine pairs best with white genocide? What a sick fucker is that? And then comes that other cretin from Cape Town, Pierre de Vos. Alles verloren, blank de blank. Sick fucker. Look, I've got some nasty images of this guy and children. And uh, I won't post it because, because. But this cretin, somebody needs to go and pay him a visit and introduce him to that old South African concept of a running fuck slap. Now this was an interesting tweet. And this guy that tweeted is from another African country. It started with this South African Katemba making a tweet and saying, it was actually your responsibility to help those farmers succeed as a form of redress. We played our part in the reconciliation process and absolved you of your sins and even let you keep your stolen gains. You haven't responded in kind. And that's referring to all the, the, the multitude of land claims in which 
the new black owners couldn't work the farms and those farms went down the toilet. And then Nachbriller responded to him saying, exactly, some really seem to believe that farming is some kind of get-rich-quick scheme. And when they prove themselves wrong, they put dozens, hundreds or even thousands of farm workers out of their jobs and then blame it on the original farmer. And then this guy said, and he quotes the, we absolved you of your sins. And then he says, Recall that no Afrikaner alive today was there in 1650, so it wouldn't be his sins anyway. And recall further that when the Boers arrived in Africa, they homesteaded unoccupied lands, so it was no sin. And the Bantu arrived after the Boers. But facts doesn't matter. And then we get Sir Cabona Alfred. And he is really giving them stick. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. The white farmers are killed every day in South Africa since Julius Malema urged them to do so. This is a crime against humanity. Julius Malema is a war criminal. Let that sink in. And finally, this market research. A staggering 73% of South Africans earn below 6 thousand rand per month and only 3.3 percent earn more than 52,000. Now those that are earning 52,000, most of them are government officials. This is according to the latest report by the Bureau of Market Research. Something to think about. And then we're at the last page and the last page is for the men, for the mana. Tonight I'm showing you some shapes to lighten up your day. Enjoy. That is some great curves. I hope you enjoyed this delivery of some news. I tried to make it fun. But there were some bad facts in there that we have to take into. Please give me a like and a subscribe. And so thank, I want to thank you for the support of the channel. And I specifically want to thank the people that are supporting the channel financially. I really appreciate it. I said right in the beginning when I started with it, I'm not going to name people. But if you want me to name you, send me a message. Thank you for your support.